Hey, well, hey guys, how are you? I see we got a a small but fiercely loyal crowd. <laughs> I see like four guys in the chat, but it only says two are watching. So I don't uh, I don't know how to figure that uh, that YouTube watch count. But at any rate, you all know me. I'm Mitch, old guy in a drone, and uh, today we're here to. Uh, actually start building on that uh, on that fixed wing airplane and uh, we'll see if uh, how much interest we uh, we do but at any rate I want to build this airplane anyway so we're gonna build it and uh, I also uh, have a panel anybody want to come in and keep me company I'm uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, post the um, the link to that in the chat right now. Uh, there you go. If anybody wants to come in and uh, join in on the panel and have a little conversation while we're doing this, that'd be great. I'd en I'd enjoy that. It uh, helps helps pass the time. If not, I'll just uh, I'll just do uh, do the work. And uh, RD, uh, it is a cool airplane. I, I watched uh, a number of videos. Uh, about this and there's quite a few of them a lot of guys have built this airplane on on uh, on YouTube and uh, anywhere from just basic airplane to fly on up to uh, FPV with uh, sophisticated flight controllers which is uh, which is what uh, what I want to do so uh, we'll see uh, who makes it uh, the, well the company's name is is Sonic model and uh, let me go uh, let me go to uh, Amazon right here and uh, I'll pull it up for you. If you hold on, give me one second and I'll show you uh, what they have here. Here it is and uh, oops, wrong one. There it is right there. So uh, this is the uh, this is the airplane, and uh, it it comes in uh, a bunch of different uh, pieces. I guess you could call it the uh, the basic airframe is um, there. It is the basic airframe is a uh, hundred and uh, was it a hundred and hundred fifteen bucks, and that's everything that you see here, uh, but no motors, servos, or any or any of that other stuff. Then they have a, uh, let's see, what happened to it? Then they have the uh, lighting kit, which is here, and that, uh, that gives you uh, Wingtip lights and and lights for the uh, flashing lights for the um, uh, tail and also some landing lights on the front of the wing. And uh, when you look at that, and get back to that picture, uh, you'll see uh, you'll see what it looks like all lit up. And then uh, there's a uh, a landing gear kit. If you want to, if you want to actually have wheels on it, otherwise it uh, it just um, comes with a plastic uh, uh, skid pan that you glue underneath it, and and a lot of guys, uh, especially guys that fly off of places that aren't real smooth, just hand launch the thing and belly land it in the grass, and it and it, and it does pretty good. So that's the landing gear kit, and you need that, and then. Uh, there's this kit here, which is the uh, the power kit, and the power kit has the motors, the ESCs, all the cabling, six servos, the props, and everything else that you need to actually make it. So, in order to build this airplane just to fly, uh, you need uh, the airplane and the power kit, and that comes to about 200 bucks. I think the power kit was. Uh, Oh, they're getting 120 for it here, but it's—I uh, I think there are cheaper places 
to get it. I think I paid about $80, $89 for mine when I bought it. I don't remember if I bought it from, uh, from Amazon or not, but, uh, but I buy what I can from Amazon because of the shipping, but uh, Banggood uh, basically has, uh, um, has everything generally a little cheaper. You just have to wait for it to get here from China, and I'm right now waiting for the little lighting kit, which according to the post office is going to be arriving tomorrow, but it took a total of about, uh, about three weeks, uh, about three weeks to get to me. Um, so at any rate, uh, I, as we get down the line, uh, I, I need to kind of put a list of all this stuff in, uh, in the description of the, uh, of this video and, and I'll, I'll get around to doing that. And then of course I'll go paste that list back into, uh, into all the other videos that, uh, that we've got. So who we've got here so far? We've got five people. We've got Rick Halber and uh, R.D., uh, Jody at Drone Shots, and me and a mystery person. So that's cool. Good to see you. Oh, you're back. Oh, you went away. That's why the viewer count dropped. Right? Well, good, Rick. I'm glad that you, uh, I know that you expressed an interest in this, and I'm glad that you, uh, that you uh, were able to do it. Um, we've got a couple different views set up today. I I'm going to kind of play this as it goes out. I don't have any set plan for what what to do when. Uh, I'm going to start with the uh, just starting to put the servos in the back of the airplane and uh, get the uh, stabilizer and the rudder mounted and uh, and get the uh, the make sure the linkages are installed correct for that and get that out of the way. I'm not going to uh, glue the uh, stabilizer and rudder in until the, until the very end in case I have to remove it for some reason. Um, then I think maybe we'll, we'll get to the landing gear. I've got this, uh, of course, this, this view here, looking down and, and uh, use that for sorting things out and something that I want close-ups of. And this, I need to light this table better, but I do have this table behind me and that, uh, that's where uh, you'll see. We'll probably I'll probably end up doing most of the building. So I apologize. I just noticed today that there's going to be some shadows, and I'm going to need a another light, but I don't I don't have one right now. So, but that table, as you can see, is right behind me there, and uh, I'll be spinning around like like a top here. I'm going to uh, I'm going to uh, Try to keep an eye on the chat and keep an eye on the green room. Um, at, 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 so if, if you do say something in the chat or you pop in the green room and it seems like I'm ignoring you, I uh, don't take it personally. I just uh, have to keep glancing over this way and that way to make to keep up with this whole thing. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I don't have a, a producer, full-time producer, to sit here and uh, <laughs> and press buttons. <laughs> and uh, RD, no, uh, I, I don't. This is not a Horizon hobby airplane, and I don't believe that they sell it. Uh, this is a competitor to Horizon hobby. It's made by uh, Sonic Model. Uh, now, Sonic Model makes uh, some other really pretty neat um, uh, and and popular flying air, uh, wings and things. Um, let me see if I can find some of them real quick here just to show you and then we'll get to work so let's see what we got yeah here we go um, sonic model makes uh, there's the binary then then they make uh, um, this one's called an AR wing 900 millimeter they make one called the sky hunter uh, this racing wing here there's a there's another another wing uh, the nano sky hunter so they they've got they've got a, 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 and they're known for the quality of their models. They're really they're really pretty good. Uh, of course, you know, I couldn't start with just start with one of the small little baby ones. I had to go right to the top of the line that they make because uh, that's how I roll, as they say. <laughs> so <laughs> we're gonna, we're going to start out with the biggest and the most complicated. Uh, it's not really a, you know I have a fairly good career or, or past in RC airplanes, so this is not really a handful for me, but uh, it, 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 for these RC FPV things, this is, this is right up there, and the thing looks like it flies beautifully. So we'll see, uh, 
we'll see how that goes. All right, so uh, what we're going to do without further ado, I don't see anybody. I did, uh, if you weren't here, I did post a link to the StreamYards if you want to jump on in and keep me company. And if you do jump in, I'll just put you guys up on the, on the side of the screen there in the small little thumbnails so that I don't detract too much from the, where, the, where the action is. Uh, Rick wants to know, which is the best for long range? I would, I, Rick, I would say something like this airplane seems to be the most popular for the guys that want to do long range. And the, the, if you just search it on YouTube, Sonic Model Binder, you'll come up with a raft of uh, videos. And some of these guys have, have gone out 15, 20, 30 miles plus uh, with these things. and. Uh, you can you can put just huge huge batteries. I've got uh, like I showed you guys the last time. I got this 6,000 milliamp four cell for it. But there there are guys that have actually put two two batteries kind of this big. You know, two five thousand maybe. You know, almost up to 10 amps worth of batteries in them. And this should get me uh, 45 minutes at, uh, conservative cruising. Uh, we'll see. We'll see, and it fits very nicely. It's got a huge cavernous area for this. So with that being said, let's uh, go over to, uh, to this table over here, and uh, I guess you guys can hear me okay. I'm, I'm all wired up with this microphone so I can, I can move around. And what I'm gonna do over here is we're gonna, this is the, these are the only instructions that you get, and they're, they really don't give you a whole lot of a clue. Uh, the one thing that I was looking at was to see which way the servos were installed and one of these pictures had a, uh, here it is, this little picture right here. And I'll see if I can't, I don't know how, how effectively this is going to, this is going to show. It might, it might actually show pretty good. Uh, wow. It's very hard to see. That's about as far as I can zoom in. But looking at this picture, it appears that the side of the servo with the and I'm looking I'm looking at these uh, at these right back here, right back here. It appears in this picture that the servo arms go towards the back. And uh, so we'll slide them in there and and then mount the mount the stab and check out the linkage that they give you and see if that's indeed the, the correct way to do it. So here we go. All right, this is the power kit that comes with it and stickers, propellers, servos. And I guess the linkages come in the airplane kit. So let me grab two servos out of here. Cute little things. Metal, metal gears. They're very small. Nine gram servos. So I got two of those and uh, Let me go find all the all the uh, the push rods. Here, here is the uh, the stabilizer and the rudder. And there we go. There is the package with with that stuff in it. Okay. Dustin Hunhill, yeah, he does. Dustin does, and you know who else uh, does a lot of FPV um, airplanes, fixed wing stuff, is uh, drone, just Drone Camps RC. He, he does a lot. But this guy, uh, Bonafide Pirate, is the one that it, it kind of inspired me. And uh, he, if you really want to, really want to, get into the feel of what this is this fpv airplane stuff is all about he's got some some great stuff nice down-to-earth guy uh and uh 
he he he's got just a lot of a lot of really good videos and and uh, talks about a lot of the different flight controllers, the different uh, types of uh, uh, whether it's uh, Eagle Tree Vector or whether it's uh, uh, the uh, Maytech wing flight controllers, which is what I'm going to use. You can run uh, iNav, which is what I'm going to run on it, or you can uh, run Arju Pilot and Arju Flight. And there's just a lot of different ways you can go. But uh, these things that are pretty sophisticated, stuff that, that we really didn't have uh, way back when I tried to do this 15 years ago. Okay. I, it's got a lot of push rods, so I don't guess I'm going to know which, and there's a bunch of servo extensions in there too. I won't know until I get the servos mounted. So, so let's go over here, and I hope we can see all this, to the, uh, yeah, Rick, I wish you had one too. Uh, hey, listen, I'll tell you what, when you, uh, when, when you uh, get yours, uh, um, I'll build another one. <laughs> I hope this is that is the kind of airplane that uh, that I might want to build another one of. Okay, nobody in the green room yet. All right, so what we have here is we got this we got this servo, and of course we need some servo extensions to get the servo wires all the way up to the front. That's a splitter. That's a splitter. this maybe we might need a longer extension and when you plug these things in you've got ground on one side power in the middle and uh, signal on the outside you know, make sure you plug them in correctly and let's uh, take this over over here yeah that's uh, that'll reach you can see that uh, that'll reach all the way up to the uh, to the flight controller so let's remove this hatch here get it out of the way and they in the power kit you do get some of these you do get some of these uh, orange things which are which are clips I can see this is going to get real cluttered real real fast here you do get some of these orange clips to make sure that these connectors don't come undone. Uh, there, there's an alternate method that we, we used to use that works very effectively. Uh, and that was to take, and this is just an old trick of the trade. We used to take, I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit on it. We used to just take a tie wrap like this and put the tie wrap down between two of the wires. There it is, between two of the wires, and then bring it up on the other side between those, those two wires. And then do this. And tie it and tie it shut. Now, I'll do this, and if I can't if I can't fit it through the uh, if I can't fit it through the the space in the fuselage. So that's what anyway. That's what that's what it looks like when it's tie wrapped together. And I'll save these fancy uh, orange things for some of the stuff that goes to the wing. But this this is not coming apart right here. That's for sure. Another thing. That I've, that I've made mistakes on that I always cautious is when you is while you're busy snipping the ends off of these tie wraps you don't end up cutting the wires so I'm always become very cautious about that ever since I cut the antenna wire on one of my quad antennas right off when I was busy uh, busy trying to uh... all right so we're going to need two of these servos and extensions so
So let's make sure we get the uh, the black and the white side, everything, everything lined up correctly. Do another. This is the kind of stuff you never see on on the build videos th these guys put up on the internet, and uh, probably smartly so because it, it turns may turn some of these videos into to watching paint dry. But I just uh, kind of like uh, the hangouts, the hangout idea of this as well. So it's just like spending an afternoon with the guys in the workshop. Okay, so we got two of them and they're not coming apart. Uh, I see we're down to four people who we're not boring the hell out of, so that's good. Now, back in uh, back in here, underneath the wooden mount is a slot that kind of goes through. So, I'm going to try to do this without, uh, let me move it over here so you can see it. And we're going to try to feed this wire through the hole. It's going somewhere. And now we got the connector. Let's make sure that, that I can get that through. So let me reach. On the bottom of this airplane is another hatch way back here for the for the FPV camera and that's going to make it it's one of the reasons I like this thing it, it's got all these hatches and that hatch down there on the bottom makes it very very accessible so now what I need to do is I need to uh, grab onto this to this wire inside the airplane and see if I can get that connector and you pardon my head through the hole yes okay so that's in uh, let's see if I'm actually showing it to you yeah there you go uh, and the servo, according to the little picture, goes and getting these things in here with the little flanges at an angle with that wire sometimes is, is a job without pinching the wire too much. So let's put that, yes, that's uh, great. Okay, so it, It's a tight fit. There it goes. Okay. Now, one of the things that, because this is a foam airplane, you got to be careful what you got underneath it because you end up putting all kinds of dents in it. So what I'm going to do temporarily here uh, is just kind of tie this, put this wire up around the hole here so it doesn't, that connector doesn't end up laying on the bottom of the airplane and I ended up, I end up denting it, denting it all up. Not that it'll make it fly any worse or anything, but uh, so that's, that's the way it says that it goes. And uh, this one over here is the elevator one. So let me take, let me go ahead and take the, uh, the horizontal stabilizer and slide that in. Temporarily. Boy, that thing is keyed in there perfectly. And then a push rod has, to, let me get this centered here. There we go. You guys see that? 
push rod has to go from here to there and uh, let me let me find the servo somewhere there's got to be a bag a little bag of uh, servo horns what we got here there they are all right so here we have a little bag whoops sorry guys a little bag of uh, of servo horns so we need we need two of these horns and two of these little screws now interestingly enough we need we can just put these things on now, but we but we we won't have any idea whether um, the servo is centered. And uh, fortunately, I have tools that a lot of people don't have because of my old RC days. So this thing here is a little a little device called a Checkmaster Two, and it does everything from exercise servos shows you the midpoint of the servos it uh, uh, has a visual tachometer here where you can actually measure the rpm of your propellers or for helicopters the rotor rpms which is very important when you're setting up helicopters so i've had this thing for a lot of years and the, the battery in it was shot but it, it used a pack that made, was made up of four triple a size uh nickel metal hydride batteries so i ordered four batteries from amazon and i soldered up a new pack for it and i'll be damned if it doesn't work so let's turn the power on here and it says bantam checker servo tester so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just take for right now i'm going to put this servo in here and uh the minus goes to here and I can hit enter and right now it's set at 1500 microseconds but if I if I move this and let me show you I'll put I'll put the arm on it so you can see what it's doing if I move this you see the arm on the servo is moving okay and what I can do is hold this until it says it stops right at 1500 milliseconds. And if you fly quads, you know that 1500 millisecond pulses is, is neutral. It quads, you set them up from 1000 on the low end to 2000 on the high end. And servos are the same thing. So I know that this servo is now centered. So I can pull this, this horn off the spline and when I put it on, Knowing that this is centered, I, could, I know this is straight, and I know that when I put the airplane together, that's, uh, that's good. So now I have this servo tester set at 1500. I'm going to go over here, and I'm just going to plug it in. And what that's going to do is just center that servo. So let me, uh, let me plug that in. Where's minus? Minus is this way. There it goes. All right. And uh, if I move it, you can hear it echoing through the 1500 milliamps. Okay, so that servo right now is centered. We'll turn this off. This is a handy thing to have. I don't expect, I mean, this just saves you a little trouble down the road. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to run out and buy one of these things if you build airplanes, but I, I did have quite an extensive workshop and a toolkit for this stuff, so I managed to, did manage to dig all that stuff up. All right, so let's take a horn here and uh, put the horn at 90 degrees and it fell in the airplane. All right, am I in the camera here? Yeah, put the horn on at 90 degrees.
And interestingly enough, they usually don't, you get them as close as you can and then you have to use sub trim on the radio. All right, so that horn is on there. And let's get this little tiny screw here and it is a Phillips head screw. And we'll put that in there just to, just to hold it. I'm also going to need to put two screws, two wood screws in to hold the servo, but I'll, I'll do that, uh, I'll do that towards the end. So now I can see what pushrod length I need here, and if I've got one that's, that's the right length, then there's a good chance that I got the servos in the right direction. So that's uh, probably the longest, the longest one of these. So this goes here. And it's too long. So what else have I got? That might be the rudder one. Let's see what the next longest one is. Again, this airplane comes with zero, zero instructions. And that one is short. So... Let's put the rudder on and see if I do have that servo in backwards because the, uh, and the rudder, the rudder just fits in, fits in like this. Right there. So now let's see what the length of the, the rudder it looks like it looks like they the the control horn should be towards the front so i got clever and magnified their little picture up so that i could make sure that i had this in the right direction put it in in that direction and lo and behold that's not correct <laughs> And with that note, let me take a just a short little break here and uh, and see who we got. We got seven people here. Hey, wow! Oh, Mana Mana, how you doing, my friend? Good to see you. Yeah, we just met on uh, Canadian Drone Hub this morning, and uh, uh, that's great. Thanks. And Barry, hey Barry G, how you doing? Good to see you. Why don't you? Let's one of your some of you guys come on in here. W won't hurt. Who else we got? Barry G. Menomena. That's a hell of a name you got there. And anyway, welcome to welcome to one of my videos, my friend. Uh, if, if you'd like uh, to put your first name in there, we'll call you by your first name. Uh, as you notice, you're the only uh, non-moderator in here, and um, we make everybody a moderator. So you guys feel you know you can feel free to post links if you like or. As long as you all behave yourselves, you know, it's fine. And uh, kind of like Roger does over at Canadian Drone Hub, but uh, lets, me, lets me see who's new. Uh, and uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make you a moderator right now so you have a blue wrench like the rest of us. I'm always driving. <laughs> uh all right, Barry. Well, you know, we'll be here for a little while. I've managed to, all this time, and I've managed to install one servo backwards. So we're really screaming, screaming down the road. Now, the interesting thing about it is if, if I was building this thing and it, and it wasn't a live stream, I could probably knock the whole thing out in a, in a day. <laughs> but it wouldn't, be any, it wouldn't be any fun that way. And uh, uh, I think the, uh, I think the, uh, uh, Having a, having a record of this might help some people. I, you know, I, I, I hope that uh, somebody gets some benefit from this, even if the next guy to build one of these things knows which way to put that stupid servo in so you, so you don't follow what the directions say. You actually, you actually do it the correct way. So let's, uh, let's go back to, to here. And now I got to pull this out and turn it around. 
So let's see if there isn't a delicate way to do this without, because it went in there pretty tight. I don't want to dent up the foam. It's coming. There it is. So we got to turn it around. So we'll turn it around. And you just got to be careful not to dent up the wire as it's going down in there. Good. All right. Went, went easier the second time. And of course, that means we now have to turn the horn the other way. All right, let's try that again. Then after you're, when this is when this is all done and uh, this thing is in is in the right position uh, and everything is wired and all the lights that go up into the tail, the little flashy lights are all hooked up and everything's everything's great. Uh, I'll use some of this. Uh, it's called foam core glue. And it's designed for this kind of foam. And I'll put a, just a small amount on there and glue that stab in there, and then that's it. It's in there for the duration. But until the airplane's almost done, and I have mounted the wings and measured the distance from the wingtips to the tail and sighted it to make sure that the, that the, the wings and the stab are all level, uh, I don't want to be gluing any of that stuff in yet. All right, so let's take one of these and see if it, what hole I'm going to need it on. And I may, well, what do you know? It fits exactly. How do you like that? I think I may have to drill. Yeah, we're going to have to drill that control horn out a little bit. And I think that if I put this on the outer hole here, which is always what you want. You want the most leverage. I'll put that, oops. Put that in the outer hole here, and uh, I want to make sure right here there's a little channel. We want to clear that channel. We don't want the wire hitting it. And if I push it over, I can go in as far as the second hole in. And I think the second hole in is probably going to be what I want. So I have to, I do have to drill that that horn out a little bit. So. Um, let's see, let's take it off of here. I think I'm going to take it off the airplane to do that. Now, get the screw out of it. So what we need to do now, we'll come back over here to this, uh, to this table. What we need to do is we need, this thing's got a, it's got a Z-bend on it and it's got to fit uh, into that hole and then bend this way. So you want it to be snug. You don't want any slop at all in these things. And this is a, uh, one point two one millimeter wide shaft. Okay, now I think in a miscellaneous box of 
tiny little screws and other cool stuff that I have. I have some tiny little drill bits in here, I think. And if they're not in here, I have uh, a whole set of micro drill bits. Well, that's not a drill bit, but that's a... Uh, no, that's a threaded thing. Well, I have a pin here. A big pin. wonder what the diameter of that is. Too small. Okay. Uh, I thought I, I saw some of those little... Ah, here we go. Here's a drill bit right here. And this drill bit is... 1.39 so considering that this is plastic I'm gonna sh I'm gonna go for it with this with this drill bit and uh, I think that uh, I happen to have hundreds of these ho control horns anyway but because it's plastic, it usually flexes when you drill it, and it should it should be tight. So this should go into here now. Yes, it is. And do I have any play? Uh, yeah, too much play. So we're not gonna we're not gonna use that horn for there, and that drill bit is is too big. Another way that uh, that I drill these things sometimes is is just taking a a, a knife edge and and doing that but uh, I think what I what I probably need to do is excuse myself for one minute guys and I'm gonna go in and see if I can't put my hands on those tiny little drills real quick got him Okay, here we go, tiny little drill kit. I'm all set, I can go in the jewelry business here. <laughs> uh, let's see. We want real, a real tiny one. Well, those are, those are tiny and Probably don't have the right size. These look way, well, maybe in here. Let's check the, the size. I'm looking for 1.2 millimeter. 0.9. Are there any bigger ones in here? I think these are all the one millimeters and below. So in this bag here, they all look bigger. Wait a minute, what's this one here? One point two. There we go. All right. So we got a. This is a brand new kit. Never used it. Okay, 
So let's try. Let's try this one. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Yeah, well, since now nah, we'll try this one here. Righty. Oh, perfect. No, perfect. No play whatsoever. All right, that's good. So let's take and uh, put this on here. In. All right, that needs to be bent down a little bit, the Z bend. It's coming off at a little bit of an angle, so need to come in here and And that a little bit straighter. Now you don't have to be this much of a perfectionist, but I am. Good. Still, ah, that'll be all right, though. All right. I think now it's got to go in the top, not enough room in the bottom for it. Now another thing we're going to do when when this is put together finally is these are are relatively cheap uh, control horns and uh, we take some old silicone fuel hose and I got a roll of it outside and cut about a quarter inch piece and slip it over this and that helps hold it hold it together and that's a very important thing to do with these plastic control horns. Now, now that I got that in there, I want to hook this uh, servo tester back up to it again. And um, try to get it as close to, get this centered and as close to center as I can. Let's see. So that's centered right there. That's 1500. And the airplane, the, the, the elevator is up kind of high. So we want that elevator to be straight this way. So what I'm going to do now is uh, take this off of here and unscrew this until it's until it's straight and we'll get it in the neighborhood a little more and that'll be pretty close to what we need
So, if I turn this up on its side here, can we see that? We got that in there. And I move this, we have elevator control. So that's cool. That's working good. Very good. Those little metal gear servos make a lot of noise. They're not, I don't know if they're the highest quality servos that ever lived, but uh, from, the, from what I've watched on, uh, on, the, uh, on YouTube about this airplane, um, now they have holes drilled for these servos into the wood. And I, they don't give you, <laughs> they do not give you the screws for, uh, for that. So that's where this comes in handy. So that's where this comes in handy. So what I want to do is find. Otherwise, I guess if you don't have if you don't have these things, you got to buy them. Gotta find some tiny little wood screws here. I think this size will work. Will it fit in the hole in the servo? tight. There's the size I need right there, I guess. This little tiny thing. There we go. So let's see if I have, if I can find a few more of these. And I, I don't know where, I guess they sell these assortments uh, on, on Amazon or somewhere for these tiny, little, these tiny little screws, but I've built so many airplanes in the past and all the servos that you bought generally came with extra screws and I've just, I've just saved them and uh, this is just a tiny little bit. I got a big thing about this big multi-compartmented thing just full of hardware but at any rate this uh, these are good so we need two of these and we'll put these in over here and See if I can get these things screwed in. Okay. All right, so that is in there and it just clears the little indentation here for that. And that's it. Let's go fly. <laughs> Let's see what we have here. Uh, anybody new come in? No, same crew, same crew. Nobody wants to join me in the chat. Rick, you don't want to come on in here and, and talk to me while I do this? If you don't, that's okay. Uh, all right, guys, let's uh, go ahead and 
and get the uh, and get the rudder servo in. Get all these nasty metal things out of the way so I don't dent up my airplane. So we put the wire in. I thought it was going to be hard to fish this wire through, but it uh, it's, it's easy. It's just right here. Before we put that in, let's let's go. I think I'm going to go in one hole for the uh, for the rudder, and Go ahead and put this in here. There we go. For the rudder. And this is the screw for it right here. This is a really nice design that having uh, the servos way in the back like this. It, uh, it, it's, it's really, uh, the shorter the push rods in, in any airplane, the better. There it goes, okay. All right. So while I'm at it, I'll go ahead and screw this in place. You know, they sell an, a lot of kits that you buy or airplanes that you buy and all of this stuff is already installed and uh, ready to go, but uh, it takes the hobby aspect out of it. I, I, I mean, this is something to pass the time and Gives you a little feeling of accomplishment, even though it's not rocket science. Let's get this center, this thing somewhere near center. Okay, so that's centered. Okay, and uh, let's set this in here. Okay, and
adjust this so that the rudder is somewhere near near the center. They do snap together. There we go. Well, they they got a little indent here, which is way lower than the uh, than the push rod, but that's okay. And put the little screw in the servo. I may have to go out a little bit if that servo is, yeah, it's rubbing up against the foam. All right, I'm going to have to, uh, I have to drill me another. Okay. So, y'all still with me? <laughs> How many we got here? Six? All right. Huge crowd. You know, I was watching. Uh, Joshua Bardwell has a couple of live streams a week where he uh, he answers questions and uh, he's got a big following and I was watching his live stream goes from one to three today so before this thing started I was watching uh, was watching his stream and he had uh, over 700 people watching which makes Ken Huron's live stream look look weak. So, I mean, that's a following. And uh, and he works really hard. He's got a great channel and a lot of tremendous information. And I, I learn a lot from him about uh, the FPV stuff that I need to know. And, and more power to him. I think that uh, he deserves that kind of a following. But it's his full-time job, too. And, I don't particularly want to want to work that hard, so uh, I got what six people here. That's almost seven hundred and fifty, isn't it? <laughs> Let's see. All right. Let's center that servo up. There it is. There we go. Well, that's great. This one I had to pull down. This one I got to pull up. That's okay. And a little screw. Set the rudder in there. These pieces are are just go together just tremendously. They're they're really really well engineered. And there it is. And I believe that's gonna that's gonna clear, but we're gonna try it anyway. 
got a, you guys, am I in the picture here? Yeah. Let's take and plug this in. And it's going to moving it center it works okay good good all right normally they don't move that slow but this thing uh, you can speed it up you can use this thing to exercise servos too you can set it to just Start going back and forth and keep going until you stop it. Check things out. All right, so we, we've got it. We've got it. That's the, uh, let me bring it over here where it's a better image. What happened to my camera? There it is. Um, we've got the, uh, the two servos installed in there, all screwed down. Control horns are in place. They're hooked up to the uh, to the control surfaces. There's the elevator, and this side is the rudder. And I'm just going to leave that all together for the time being. So that's the empennage of the airplane. And uh, step one. There I am. Uh, let me check, catch up on the chat here and see what's uh, going on. That uh, camera that I have looking down at the build table, for some reason it, uh, it's got to go through a capture card and sometimes it just uh, kind of blinks in and out on me. Um, let's see, where was I? Where did I leave off here? Uh, by saying hello to everybody, anything Mitch can't do. <laughs> oh, Dan, I, I didn't even see you in here, man. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Thanks for thanks for coming in. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of things I can't do. <laughs> uh, let me count the ways. Yeah, there's a lot of things I can't do, but there are some things I can do, and RC hobby is one of them. Barry, I'm using a, uh, just an old Sony video camera, uh, or handy cam kind of a camera that, uh, that has an HDMI output, and I'm running the HDMI output into uh, a relatively inexpensive capture card, and uh, it, it does pretty good, but you know what's, what's kind of nice about that is um, the camera has, has a, a really nice zoom range on it. And for this kind of stuff, it uh, especially an overhead of stuff like this, it really, uh, it really, uh, if I'm soldering on controller boards and I want people to be able to see it, it, it really does a nice job and gets gets in there pretty close. Look at this. I think I could maybe even go more. No, that's it. That's the limit. But that's. Uh, it's a camera that I already had, so I didn't have to run out and buy something. I had to buy the the uh, capture card, but uh, it's just sitting on a on a microphone stand, uh, hanging over the over the table there, and it's a, it, it, it's worked out pretty good. I got to keep switching scenes back and forth though, but I got the the stream deck here with push buttons on it. Bucket of bolts. Yeah, you need to start somewhere, Mitch. You have zero. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Rick, uh, the Thursday show is, is, is kind of picking up and I rely, listen, I rely on the, uh, it's not so much a show. I don't, I don't do like, uh, like Ken does or, or, uh, or Greg at Oz by Drone. I don't plan out a, uh, uh, an itinerary of news and, and all that kind of, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, 
it's just a, you know, hang out with the guys kind of thing and talk about what's going on. Uh, even the Mavic Mini. Uh, Barry? Oh, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna let me keep you company in the shower. Well, we won't go there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Looks great. How high do you mount it? Um, Barry, it's, it's up about my nose, about, a, about nose high. Um, I can, uh, I can show you here. Hang on. Let's see if I can do this. Let me unclamp this camera here and is that upside down or right side up? Upside down. Okay. This is just a little webcam. So, so there it is. There's the, there's the work table right there. And if you look up, there's the camera, right? It's, it's kind of just to the right of the white light. And you see the LCD screen from it just kind of sticking out there. And I can look up and see the LCD screen and see where it's pointing without having to uh, cringe my, crick my neck to the left to look at the computer screen. But that's, uh, and this thing, you wouldn't believe, I can't show you, but you wouldn't believe the, uh, the jury rig that I have on this to get this view. <laughs> There you go. Yes, sir. Okay. So let's. Uh, you guys like my background today? I thought that uh, that that uh, looked more like a more like a workshop. Um, I I uh, I'm not actually in the room I store the drones, I took a picture of the drones and uh, use, use them as a background on the green screen. But uh, I thought it, 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 instead of the, uh, the uh, brick wall with the French door, I thought this looked, uh, looked more appropriate for building things. And, uh, you know, looking at the picture, it, it fooled me. I said, wow, that looks like I actually got the table sitting in front of the wall full of drones there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the magic, the magic of OBS, you know, if I, uh, if I, if I wanted to, I could uh, put the door right there and have the drones outside the door. <laughs> or get rid of the drones altogether and have my usual scene. So. It, it is kind of cool, and it's and the setup I'm using is really much simpler than a lot of the guys that are using OBS uh, make it make it make it. Uh, yes, it looks like a good many drones. Yeah, Barry, it's a good many drones. It's it's enough drones. I don't need any more drones now. I like building them though. That's the that's the problem. But uh, that's why I'm going over to the airplanes because I just can't build any more drones. I, number one, I I don't have any uh, wall space in that room there to hang them anymore. Okay, what's next? Let's go back over here to this and let me just stop a second here and put away this stuff that uh, clean up a little bit. So we got the drill bits and I'm not going to put this one back in the bag because I'm going to need that one again. And this little kit here kind of nice and uh, here we have a bag with the uh, we'll put this back in that bag and I'll put my little box of screws away and these are some Y connectors that we're going to need and, I'll, and additional servos and I'll just put all that in the box with the power kit. What else have I got here? What else is in here? Okay, and here are the motor mounts. I won't need them, but I, I can put them 
put all that stuff in this box. To, and this, oh, look at this. These are the plastic mounts for the flight controller. And, uh, wow, that's, I mean, that's, I'm surprised they give you that. And what are these here? Here are, oh, these are the, uh, these are the wing screws, the little thumbnails, uh, thumb screws to screw and hold the wing in. And there's some more, wait a minute. They do give you four small screws about the size of, what I uh, mounted the servos, but not enough to mount all the servos. It's possible that those screws were were to mount the uh, the rear servos, so that's cool. And if I have them left over when I'm done, you know where they're going to go. In the box with all the miscellaneous screws. They even give you a big piece of uh, Velcro with adhesive on it that you cut up and use wherever you might need it to mount uh, flight controllers or cameras or whatever else. I, I don't like to mount that stuff with Velcro. I would much rather mount it with uh, double sticky foam tape. And to that end, I went ahead and uh, picked up uh, a roll from Amazon. And this is something that if you're building airplanes or drones, you just got to have an eye run out of it. But this is that... Uh, uh, 3M VHB, they call it, a very high bond, I guess, but it, it's it's a foam tape that's, uh, once you stick it on there, it's stuck. So, got a roll of that, and uh, we'll be using some of that. So, there's the power kit. I'm done with that, and I think, how are we doing on time, quarter after four? Ah, not too bad. Okay, and I do want to save these protective wraps for the, uh... remember what I said that I use, uh, this is that, that silicone fuel tubing that, uh, that you use for uh, gas powered model airplanes. And it's just, uh, just little silicone rubber, and what we do is we cut, we take these, and we take this and cut about a quarter inch wide piece and slip it over the clevis that, that goes on the horn on the control surfaces. And uh, after you've got it in place, you slide this over, and it makes like a big rubber band around it, and it really holds it. It really holds it well. Uh, yes, great double side. Yeah, Barry, you can't beat that stuff. Can't beat it. All right, so let's. Uh, Decide what to do next. That's, I'll tell you what I think. The next thing I want to do is uh, build a landing gear. And that way I can get the fuselage sitting on the landing gear on the table and I don't have to worry about beating it up. So let's do that. That's going to be the next step. I use these, uh, I use these these little pieces of uh, fuel line on the tips of the tweezers to keep me from sticking myself. Here's, here's the rest of the control horns. I'll put that in the box over there and the little screwdriver. Uh, landing gear. There it is. stickers I got enough stickers every every piece and part I opened up with this thing came with stickers so this is the instructions for the landing gear really I don't think it's rocket science you do have to glue you do have to glue all the wood pieces together here let's take a look at what we have and see how this stuff fits together I like jigsaw puzzles. Okay, it's kind of obvious that this goes in here, like this. 
and this has a uh, a blind nut in it and the servo I'm looking at the picture here this goes from the top it goes this way the servo goes in there the uh, steerable nose wheel goes in here and it's and it's got uh, a collar on the bottom so man okay so this is let's just put this hardware over here All right, so according to this, let me zoom in a little bit here. We have a collar and Is this the right size? Ah, oh, God, what a, what a stroke of luck. Well, let's just put that on there temporarily because I know we're going to have to slide that up and down. So that goes in like this. According to the picture, looking from the top, the servo goes in the front, the landing gear goes in the back with a wheel collar on the bottom right there uh, it doesn't make any sense Oh, it's just, they just had, it just uses a, a little metal. Oh, okay, I get it. So that goes like that. And then this will go over. I'll tell you, this laser, <laughs> these laser cut plywood stuff is really, is really neat. It's like putting together a jigsaw puzzle. And I'm going to glue all this together once I make sure that I got it right. That's a little, little tight fit on that one for some reason. Why is that so tight? Okay, it goes that way. And uh, so let's, I don't see any harming glue in this right now. And I'm just gonna use some of this uh, Gorilla Gel Super Glue. Okay, we glued the top on. Wow. <laughs> nope. Let me... Wow, that really is... That really is on there. I gotta go get a big pliers, guys. Be right back.
Yeah, I only have so much room in that uh, in that studio room for tools, so I keep most of my tools outside in the in the workshop. I can't believe that thing got got welded on there. I just used it the other day for something. That's why they make channel locks and vice grips. If you could see what I'm doing, you'd laugh. It's kind of overkill. <laughs> Worked. All right. Okay, back, piece of cake. Now let's hope it isn't all clogged up. Now I can see through it. All right, ooh, this stuff really smells strong. Let's make sure that it's, yep, it's coming out. And I'm just gonna take and put a little bit right where it's gonna go. I don't need a lot of this stuff. Right along in here. And push it in. And I think I got a Q-tip here. We'll take this. Spread it along that way. Okay. Maybe put just a little drop on the outside too. And this isn't going to go anywhere. It's keyed together pretty good. It's going to be pretty strong even without the glue, but you definitely want to glue these things in. All right, so uh, so that's half of that, and there's nothing. This piece here goes in like this. So we'll take and put a little bit. This is now. This reminds me of model making. Hardly use glue for anything anymore. Remember when we were kids, we had the plastic models and the, and the styrene glue that made you high as a kite. I remember those days. Okay, there's that. And now we'll go ahead and glue this in while we're at it. Okay, and that ought to set up pretty quick. So while we're doing that, I'll come over here. There's not a whole lot of gluing on this airplane. I think that might might be that, and I think you glue the motor mounts in too. But you, use the, you don't use that. Uh, you don't glue with this. Uh, this glue onto the onto the foam. That's for sure. I think it would. I think it would uh, melt the foam. Uh, <laughs> Rick says Spank taking a nap. Yeah, no room for Spank here. <laughs> Sorry, Spank. He's in the other room. <laughs> uh, so that. will be that. So while that's while that's drying, let's come back over here and let's see. What we have for this. We have axles. We have wheels.
I guess. Not a lot of bounce in these wheels. And they just use, uh, it looks like number three, number three uh, screws for the axles. I guess there's nothing wrong with that. And let me see what they got here. You got the screw. And a nut. So is it showing that this just goes right like that with no Yep, and then they just use a regular nut here. This is not rocket science. And then a lock nut on the inside. Okay, not rocket science. Cool. So, find the right size bit for this thing here. That's it. I think this is going to do 100 knots down the runway. I have to put a little, a little grease in there, but that's, that's how it works. I don't think this airplane is going to travel any great distance on the ground anyway. All right. wrench would would be nice here but this will work okay there we are roller skate cool and then they give you two screws here so let's uh, go over here and uh, dig out the old the old airplane stand voila and uh, we'll see if we can hey look at that what do you think guys and the landing gear goes here. So, we have, uh, do the wheels go forward or backwards? They go backwards, this way, trailing. So this fits in here. Man, I'll tell you what, this, 
the tolerances on this kit are absolutely amazing. It, it really is uh, incredibly well, well manufactured. I mean, there's just no play at all on this, and yet it fits in there exactly. So let's take uh, and maybe put a tiny dabble of, of Loctite on, uh, on that screw. Just a little bit, probably wouldn't hurt. This is that uh, Loctite blue, it's the temporary stuff. So you can get it out, but uh, you don't want it to fall out. So let's take a tiny little bit of that. And the, uh, the blind nuts, but I feel like lock nuts too, are in there for that. And uh, the other screw. A little bit of Loctite. And this is a plywood plate that this mounts to. Oh yeah, that ain't going anywhere. And then they give you this, and I was afraid of that. It kind of sticks up if you put this back on. Um, but it could be sanded. If you if you see, it's got the little. Uh, you see the little cut cut in there, so. I'll take a I will I will take a sanding block and sand this back down and then it uh, it'll go it'll go in there with a just a touch of glue just a little drop of glue to hold it in place and that's got the fairing now the the nose gear um, goes up here on this end and I'm going to take this little foam piece out of here because it's just going to fall out otherwise. And what we need to do is push that little foam block out. I'm going to flip this over. Okay, and uh, we'll save this little, put this little foam block too, and when we're ready to button up the bottom and everything's mounted in there, we'll do that. So now we come back over to here. Rick Albert, countersink? Uh, no, no, no red, no red, Rick. I, I don't even want to have any of that red red stuff anywhere anywhere near me because it it is absolutely a horrendous stuff to get off. You may as well just epoxy glue it. <coughs> Pardon me, everything. All right, so this is all glued together here, this little piece. And now what we need to do is we need to mount the servo in it. This. It's like an awful lot of hardware. Well, I guess that's for the steering links and everything. Here, just get a servo for that. No shortage of these little plastic bags, that's for sure. Uh, picture, picture, picture. The uh, okay. So the servo goes in this way. Boy, this, I haven't done this model airplane stuff in a while. This really brings it all back. So now the, uh, this says that the, uh, the shaft is towards the rear. Snug. Wow.
yeah it's pinching that wire so it's a little tight yeah just a little tight so what we've got is we've got this wire and this little grommet coming out here and uh, we need to uh, carve out just a little bit of a, a little bit of this to make room for that see if that did it there it goes and the wire is going to come out in the back here see if they give you yeah they give me a couple little screws here there's one where's the other one there it is and those are Phillips head and they hold the servo in Not a whole lot to bite into there. Now this eh, that's not going anywhere. Okay, and so that goes like that. This goes through here like this. And I imagine there's a, one of these on top. How high does that have to be? We'll see, but let's Put a little set screw in here. And that'll have to, the height of that will be determined by, by the linkage. So I'm just going to put these on right now temporarily. And uh, we're going to... Uh, See which side the linkage goes off to this side. And the linkage uses this thing here. And this thing here, there's a flat right up here. And a set screw. go 
So it's got a little flat on the back of this uh, shaft to, uh, and that should line up with, if that's straight, then the wheel should be straight. Good. They actually did it right. So that goes there. And we will tighten that up. And then goes on the end of that. This thing screws on. Hey Mitch, what camera switcher do you use on your live? Uh, Barry, uh, OBS. I'm using OBS and uh, you just bring in all the different cameras as, as items in a scene and then you set up your scenes. Uh, so when I hit the scene I call top build, it does this. If I hit the scene called side build, it shows me the side, that other table. If I hit full front, it uh, shows me that one. I also have other scenes like Be Right Back, uh, the different monitors and everything else. So I'm using this Elgato Stream Deck with push buttons. So all I got to do is just push buttons to change to change scenes. So I don't need a dedicated uh, or any kind of special any kind of special camera switcher at all. Wow, we got a bunch of people came in here. Holy cow, nine people. Where did y'all come from? Let's see who's here. I miss anybody? I don't see anybody new in the chat. We got some we got some lurkers, man. Somebody's finding this fascinating. <laughs> uh, oh Rick, you're you're welcome, man. I I I I'm having fun. I'm in, I'm enjoying doing this and and uh, you know I like to talk to myself anyway, so this this legitimizes it. All right, so this goes like this. Am I on the right thing? No. There we go. This goes at an angle, and then this is going to go on here like this, and then there's going to be uh, a little push rod right here. And do they show you which, which hole in the, in the link to put it? Oh, I see what they do. Then they're using, holy mackerel, what a, they're using this little gizmo. And I'm really going to have to drill out the rod for this. Uh, and you don't need a whole lot of steering. So I'm thinking that I might go to the third, the third hole out on this and drill it out. And this is... Two, two millimeters. So I need to, wow, that's a big hole for that tiny little control horn. And I need to drill, to drill that out to two millimeters. So let's see if I have a drill in here that looks like it's two millimeters. Start measuring some of these drills. Bingo, first shot. I love it when a plane comes together. Okay. So we got a two millimeter drill here. And we're gonna drill the third hole from the center. to drill my finger there we go and then this little bugger goes in here and 
there's a, a tiny little lock nut that goes on the bottom. That's cool. And do I have a, a wrench small enough for that? I, wow. Amazing. So we'll put this on here, but snug but not tight because it has to it has to swivel. A little too tight. This little wrench uh, came with one of my helicopters. I think it was an, an Align kit, and uh, they always came with these little wrenches. And I found it in the in the tool bin the other day, and I. I know that I had a few of them, but this is the handiest little thing for working on metric stuff like this. All right, so this goes on there and swivels, and then there's a, another set screw that goes uh, in the top right here. Well, geez, we're using up this pile of screws here little by little. Um, and this set screw goes in the top here. That's not the right set screw because that's too big. So evidently it's this little screw right here goes in the top and that's a Phillips screw. And this is just the nose gear. So it's not gonna, worse happens if anything in here comes loose, it's just gonna veer off the runway a little bit. All right, so this goes like that. This goes on here. This is a, a real mechanical contraption here and let's center that servo with the with the gizmo okay that's centered right there so let's Make this straight out the side. Good. That's all the way down, and then the little little screw to hold the servo in. bigger. I think I could use a little bigger screwdriver on this screw. Yeah, that's the one. Okay. So that goes like that. And then this goes in here and slips into the hole in this thing. And that's where I need to decide how high that need, this needs to be so it's just level. Just like, see what I'm doing? Just like this. And that tighten right there okay then the bottom one we'll loosen the bottom one and bring it up to there and that is that and then this that's a little little snug Let me just let me just back this one off just a just a tiny little bit here. Good. Okay. 
So now, this, this goes in here. This is quite a little setup for a nose gear steering. And then it goes in to the hole in, in there. And with the servo centered, and the nose gear somewhat straight, we tighten this little screw down. Okay, that looks pretty close. All right, so this is how it works. The servo moves that, oops, went all the way around. So this servo is not gonna have much throw, although I'll tell you what, I think that this needs to come, needs to come out a little bit. So let's, uh, Rather than screw at this thing, let's take the uh, take the servo thing off the top here. I tried to do it like the picture showed, but using this particular hole, we need less throw. We need less throw on the steerable nose gear, so. I'm wondering, is there room? Does it have to be inside this, this wall here? Uh, yeah, it does. Okay. So we're just going to have to adjust the throw on this servo to very little in the, uh, in the mixer on the radio. So it just has a very small amount of throw. And that'll work. But it's got to be it's got to be inside of the of this edge here because it's got to it's got to clear all that stuff in there. So let's put this back on this way. Right. Okay. The nice thing is this thing just screws into the airplane and can be removed if you need to if we need to service it or uh, make some adjustments in here. Yeah, this doesn't need to move much to move that thing. That'll just move a little, but that, uh, that'll be fine. So there it is. There's the uh, the little assembly, and what have I got left? I've got a uh, a collar for the wheel. And one set screw and then four screws to hold it in. And that used up all the that used up all the hardware. So I guess no pieces left over. 
Okay. There it is. There's the, the little steerable nose wheel assembly. And we've got, uh, this is a Y harness to uh, supposedly to connect the, uh, the rudder to it. But I'm, what I'm probably going to do, since I got a 16 channel radio, is I'm going to dedicate a channel to the nose gear steering. And uh, that'll allow me to individually adjust the throws and the endpoints of both the rudder servo and this so I can tame this way down, mix them together. So I won't need this Y harness, but uh, I will need the I will need the extension for it, and uh, I will put that in this box with all this other miscellaneous pieces and parts along with this, and the Y harness, and uh, don't need the drill. Put that away. And we'll go ahead and uh, put this in the airplane, because I think it's not going anywhere. So what do we got here? We got uh, Phillips head screws, perfect. And let's go over to the airplane. Let's see what we got here. Bob, Casey, how you doing? Welcome, welcome. Love my pin vise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, you. Is it okay if I share you out? Sure, of course. Of course, Barry. Tell everybody. <laughs> the more the merrier, man. <laughs> trying to trying to grow this little channel with uh, and keep it and keep it somewhat interesting. All right, so we're down here and let's see what we got. Let's see if I let me look at the screen here and slide this back to here. And there's that's where the nose wheel goes. So this goes in here wheel to the to the rear and it should slide right in boy you know the fit of this stuff is just incredible hey, Sean, uh, you can't see this and I gotta show you this I gotta show you this the fit of that if you can see where i just started sliding it down in the cutout in the foam and i mean i'm telling you it is accurate to a tenth of a millimeter there it fits perfectly all the way around and just slides right in there and and that that is incredibly impressive to me anyway that uh Let's see, we want, uh, we want this one, there we are. So this just slides right on down in there until it hits, until it hits the wood. If I hit the wood, I have. I have hit the wood and we have four screws 
to stick down in there and that's a job for the tweezers okay like surgery here ah yeah patient just died I should have st I should have started these screws in the, in the holes before I slid this in there <laughs> All right, so we have wheels. Okay. Let's see. A little tail heavy. <laughs> I can fix that. Battery. There you go. <laughs> it's not tail heavy anymore. So there you have it, guys. We have we have wheels. We have uh, empennage. We have a rudder, elevator, wheels, and it's starting to look like an, an airplane. And uh, that might be a great, just a great stopping place for today. So uh, for this one, because it's a little over two hours already, and I don't want to just bore the hell out of you guys too much. Uh, I, I guess you find it interesting because you're hanging in there, and, and I, I think that's great. But uh, somebody come in here next time and, and keep me company. And have a conversation with me, if you would. <laughs> Can you see it over there? There it is. It's actually starting to look... Look more like an airplane and it took let's see it took two hours to do that with all the talking and fooling around but it's uh it's done right and uh we didn't didn't ding up the airplane or dent it up or break anything so so that's good so who we got left here rick barry bob uh rick barry bob rick barry bob it looks like that's about it uh let's say seven guys watching um Oh, no, that's good. We had, uh, 
that's the peak at the most 10 people at one time. So that's not bad. It's more than I thought that I that I'd actually uh, that I'd actually draw with this thing. Um, the next uh, the next video uh, Tuesday I, I, I uh, Tuesday Wednesday I'm going to be out of town actually doing a commercial drone shoot. So um, I may do I may do some tomorrow. We'll see what we'll see what happens. Uh, if I do it, it's going to be in the afternoon. I, I don't want to go on and try to compete with all the evening things that are going on. I realize that uh, I'm not going to get a, get a, get a lot of guys that uh, are working. But uh, I know tomorrow night, uh, I believe uh, Lloyd Lloyd is on. Um, anyway. We'll see. I may do it in the morning. Whatever, whatever I feel like building it, I'm just gonna. Uh, I'll probably uh, schedule it, maybe like I did today, a couple hours in advance, and uh, get everything set up and ready to go. But the next time, we're gonna start. Uh, we're gonna get the wings done, get the uh, get the aileron servo, the flap servos in, get the uh, ESCs installed, get the motors and the props, and uh, and get all that stuff ready to go, and and basically uh, have the airplane built. And ready to start installing uh, all the electronics in it, which is going to be uh, time-consuming because you know I've got to make sure I do it all right. I'm <clears throat> working in a version of iNav that's relatively new, uh, and, and and it's going to be involved. And and there's going to be a lot of wires. This thing it's going to be a rat's nest and. Uh, <laughs> It's a good thing I have tie wraps. I like to tie wrap things and keep them neat. When I was in the military, we used to, I was in electronics and we used to wire up these god awful monster things of cables and we had to lace them back in those days with lacing twine. And you'd, you'd, you'd have a hex, you'd be wondering bundles of, of, of big coaxial antenna cable with hundreds of them in there and you had to stack them up in a nice square and then you had to take a hacksaw blade and we use that like a needle with lacing twine and you'd slide them through and then you'd you'd grab on and you'd pull like this on the twine and every one of us had calluses along this side it was was incredible i don't i think they're all gone by now because that was over 50 years ago but but that's what we did we laced them up and then you come back in the other way you lace them up these turned out to be almost one foot square bundles of cable that was about three eighths inch wide it was, it was incredible. And uh, so when I uh, when I uh, build anything, whether it's a computer, when I was in the computer business, you could always tell a computer that my company built because every wire was routed and, and went neat and had tie wraps on it. You know, it wasn't a rat's nest when you open up. And that's that's how I always approached model model airplanes. And so this one will be kind of when it's done, it'll be nice looking and. Probably not necessary to do a lot of that stuff, but uh, you know, it's just it's my it's my style. So uh, that's what we're going to do next time. We'll we'll hit the wings and the motors, and I've, I've got still got a a whole box full of stuff here that needs to go into that thing somewhere. <laughs> but we got a head start on it today, and I, I again thank you guys for uh, for coming in and. Uh, keeping me company and I hope you enjoyed it and it wasn't too boring and uh, we'll do it we will do it again probably tomorrow for a little while uh, and with that I will bring my music in there it is that's not the music I want. let me get my my theme song here where is it what's coming up next in this this is a mix that I have it. No, that's not the one I want. I want. Uh... There we go. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, eight of it. Somebody just showed up right at the end. It never failed. Anyway, thanks for. Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks for coming in. Catch you all tomorrow. And uh, see you then. So, uh, so take care. Let me see if I can find Spank to say goodbye. There he is.